Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm here with my friend Zach. Today we'll be talking about 10 pieces of advice that we wish we had as computer science students. A little about me, I studied computer science at UMass Lowell and I got my undergraduate degree in December of 2020. Oh uh, yeah, so my name is Zach and I also graduated with David, but I graduated a semester early. I finished my computer science degree and got a job right out of school due to an internship I got. And I kept working at that internship and then they hired me full time. And then I switched positions and moved to Florida. So now I'm a software engineer in Florida. Okay, the first piece of advice that's really important is to go to class. Because if you don't go to class, you're not going to get attendance points. You're not going to absorb information from the professor. And you're also not going to be able to make new connections with your friends and professors. Zach, would you like to add on to that? Well, I agree with that. I've always gone to class. Like I went to almost every class. I learn better in class. I read a lot. Like I read a lot of the textbooks, but su subsidizing both like the in-class learning with the textbooks like greatly helped me. Uh, it really depends though. You really have to learn how you learn. So everyone's different. So like, but professors and classmates, like being in an in-class discussion, like it does help you learn. Like it, there's proven facts that it does help you learn. Yeah, you'll definitely be able to absorb information a lot better if you're actually present in the classroom. Even though you might be able to find all the information online, it's better to go in class, ask questions to your professor and to just give a good name for yourself, like get noticed, you know? So one thing that I want to talk about is not being intimidated by other people's progress. And what I mean by that is if you're given a project by a professor and someone finishes that project within, you know, a week and it takes a whole month to finish, don't be intimidated by that because more likely the, the reason is because they probably have more experience. They might've been started coding when they were nine years old or 12 years old. I didn't start coding until I was a freshman in college. So I was a little behind, but it doesn't matter because like I put just as much time in, in college as people did when they were learning earlier years. So I just had a, I had a greater learning curve and it intimidated me a lot at first, but now like I realize you shouldn't worry about that. Just worry, focus on yourself. Yeah, that's definitely a good piece of advice because if you're looking at someone who completes an assignment in one week and it takes you three weeks, that can be very discouraging. Point number three is going to be really important, especially if you want to become a software engineer after you graduate. And that is to get co-op and internships. Co-op and internships open you up to the workplace, give you relevant experience experience, builds up your network of connections, and also you can make a little money on the side if your internship is paid. Zach, would you like to talk about some internships you had in your undergraduate experience? So it was actually really hard for me to find a, a co-op or an internship, but I kept applying and I sent my resume out to a bunch of places. And I didn't even look at the job description. I finally got a job in the IT department of a company and, you know, I was doing very basic stuff, but I stuck with it and they were impressed. So what ended up happening is as soon as I finished school, um, they hired me full time at, in the IT department, but then I, I applied for a software engineering position. Um, and that's why I moved to Florida. I really believe that, you know, hard work and persistence at a company can go, go a long way. So one thing you can do is check to see if your school has career fairs. Ours had it twice a year in the fall and the spring semesters. But what really helped me is that there was like an internal network uh, where we could go to look for co-ops. And that's what, how I find my, found my internship through the internal college website. It used to, I forget what it used to be called, but now it's Handshake. Handshake's a really popular one that colleges use or universities use. So um, yeah, go ask your professors about it. So one thing, one of my professors, my favorite computer science professors uh, said to me was there's no such thing as magic in computer science. There's a reason for everything that happens in your computer, um, every error message. It's not that, oh, something's not working. Why isn't it working? Well, you have to track down that error message. There's, there's a lot of reasons that things might not work. You maybe forgot a semicolon, but don't get discouraged. If you don't get it, sleep on it, try again tomorrow. Yeah, don't hammer away at a problem, especially if you're not seeing any results. Sometimes it's best to step away from the problem or get someone else's advice on the task that you're trying to solve. 
The next thing we're going to talk about is doing clubs outside of normal class hours. Now, this is really important to build up your social network and also to make new connections. What we did is I was in, there's so many different fields within computer science. There is the um, ACM, um, there is the cybersecurity, there's plenty of different clubs. I enjoyed networking and um, cybersecurity, so that's why I joined one of those type of clubs. And I became one of the leaders in that, um, in that club and I presented different topics to um, beginner students. There are a lot of different subfields inside of computer science, and it might be difficult to figure out which one you want to specialize in. That's why early on in your undergraduate career, you should figure out uh, what you want to specialize in. Like for me, I've realized sophomore year that I want to specialize in mobile development because I believe that's where the future is heading towards. Other people specialize in web development, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity. There's so many different fields. You need to get good at one, and then once you get good at one, you can convert all those skills to any other field that you want to pursue. So the next piece of advice I want to talk about is simplicity. Um, when you're solving a problem, break it down to the easiest possible form that you can. If you're trying to solve a complex math problem, start with what you do know. Have a to-do list of everything you need to get done for a project. For me, what I do is use GitHub issues where I can track my progress and also create separate pull requests for whatever project I'm working on. Even if I'm not working with other people, it's a great way to track your progress and to make sure that you're staying focused on the problem that you're trying to solve. Be sure to have a lot of side projects as this will increase the chances of you remembering whatever programming language or framework that you're learning. For an example, while I was studying Android programming, I decided to study iOS on the side as that that's what really interested me, but they didn't have iOS courses at my school. And now I'm an iOS developer because of my little side projects that I had. You could do things like cryptocurrency, algorithmic trading. You could make a social media bot. There's so many different ideas that you can find on YouTube or anywhere else on the internet. You just got to look in the right place. All right. So my, my last point that, and I think this is the most important point for me, and I always preach this, is make friends and talk to your classmates and professors for several reasons. One, after you graduate college, you never know who you might have helped in school. They help you find a job or vice versa. They help you find a job. You help find them find a job. Even professors will help you find jobs if you get to know them well enough. You can also utilize your friends to help each other with homework and everything. A common stereotype among computer science students is that they're introverted, antisocial, but that's very far from the case. There'll be a lot of people in your undergraduate career that also have very similar interests as you. So you just got to put yourself out there. Yeah, I agree. Don't be shy. All right. Thank you guys for watching this video. We're going to be making more of these type of uh, videos in the future. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share with all your friends. I'll leave Zach's LinkedIn down below so you can connect with him if you choose to, as well as my LinkedIn. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day. See ya. Don't have kids.